Hi guys, this is Troy Mail, and I'm talking to Danny Spencer, who plays guitar with Jimmy Barnes and John Stevens, amongst others. Thanks for coming in, mate. Thanks for having me, Troy. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, best place to start is I'm keen to know how you got the gig playing with Jimmy Barnes. Well, when I was about 18, I moved to Melbourne from the country, and um, I was studying sound engineering mm -hmm. at the School of Audio Engineering. Yep. And uh, I knew about this guy called Paul Sherritt, who was a sound guy, pretty well known in Melbourne. Uh, and he worked for Jimmy Barnes, but he also worked at this club called the Mercury Lounge. I don't know if you remember that, from the, in the casino. And I used to go in there and just hang out and help him for free, you know, try and learn a bit about sound and roll leads at the end of the night and stuff. And then after a while of doing that with him, he said, do you want to come on the road with Jimmy and, um, and guitar tech, you know, tune guitars and set up oh, the gear? Because yeah. he knew I played a bit of guitar. And um, I did that for probably three or four months and through that, um, I think I was playing at a sound check one day when Jimmy's band walked in and said, oh, you know, you can, do you want to get up and play a song with Jimmy tonight? Because he only had one guitar at the time. So I get up and play a second guitar for a couple of gigs and then it was like I was playing more and more. I was, then I ended up playing the whole set and then he said, do you want to, you said you're fired from the crew because I want you to join my band. So Really? So that was probably about a year after or less after I started working on the crew. So you sing as well, yeah? Did that help you get, did your singing ability help you get the gig, do you think? Or was you not nah, required to sing at the start? That was just purely playing rhythm guitar. Because Dave Leslie, Dave Leslie from the Baby Animals, he was in the band at the time. Right. And uh, he was the only guitar player. So I ended up being, you know, the rhythm guitar role while he was in the band, you know? Okay. Yeah. And then slowly, slowly you took over yeah, playing more Yeah, and then ended up playing more, yeah, just, yeah. As Dave moved on and went back to play with the Baby Animals and, yeah, then I was the only guitar for a while and I've, Got to play with a bunch of guitar players in that band, actually. And so, leading up to that, were you doing a lot of covers gigs, original leading gigs? Leading up to that, I was doing mainly... I just moved from the country and I was studying sound engineering and I was playing in a cover band at the time, yeah. Playing like four nights a week. Okay. You know, just like a top 40 kind of thing. So so with those Barnsy stuff, have you had to learn like original guitar solos of the, all the Jimmy Barnes stuff? Or? Yeah, well, he, he's not so strict about note for note stuff, you know, um, but you kind of have to make that decision for yourself, like what what's important and what's sacred is a, you know, part that is you know, part of the song or, and where you can take license to inject a bit of, um, bit of your own vibe into it. But um, we did a tour a couple of years back, which we, was basically recreating a couple of his big albums. And, and we took the approach on those that we would all learn the parts exactly and play it as if you were listening to the album, you know, with the same sounds and everything. So, yeah, right. So that, that was a great exercise in just uh, going back to what, what, you know, where the song came from. And um, that, yeah, it's a good thing to do. Okay, and what yeah. about Cold Chisel stuff? You have to learn original Mossy solos. At yeah, all? I mean, those yeah, because they're so iconic. You sort of yeah. you sort of want to, and they're you know you don't want to deviate too much. But I guess there's you just got to use your instinct about where you can deviate. You know, but yeah. for, for the most part, the Chisel stuff is it's you just play it. Mm. You know, play what's there. You know, yeah. have you had to play that stuff, those Chisel solos, in front of Ian Moss at all? Uh probably yeah, because he we do a lot of gigs where Jimmy will be headlining and like there's other bands on the bill like festivals and Mossy's on a lot of those actually so uh, he's yeah, he's been side stage watching some gigs yeah so I'm sure we played some chisel songs at those gigs so, okay yeah a little scary or intimidating? yeah of course yeah yeah right <laughs> okay yeah but he's he's always really nice so yeah not okay too, not too scary you know right yeah. And so what about growing up? Did you learn Mossy solos growing up? Or what, who, uh, like, who did you influence, listen yeah. to? Well, when I was on? growing up, Diesel was a massive influence. Yeah. Uh, he's probably the reason I started playing. And then I used to love Jack Housden from the, from the Bad Loves. Mm -hmm. And I used to love old blues stuff like, you know, uh, Buddy Guy and B.B. King and, and, yeah, Mossy, of course. And, and actually Dave Leslie from the Baby Animals too. He was a big yeah. influence when I was growing up. <laughs> Playing when you kind of playing with Jimmy Barnes, uh, do you deal with this like 
is it an intimidating gig? Is nerves you something you wrestle with at all, or are you completely relaxed? Uh, well, not completely relaxed. If you're completely relaxed, you'd be in trouble because it's you got to have some kind of energy to bring mm-hmm. to the gig, especially that gig. Um, early on, nerves. Are pr- it's probably I wouldn't say nerves, but you do get yourself into some kind of you know. It's like you're going out to play a football game or something where mm-hmm. you you know you can't walk out too relaxed, otherwise you, get, yeah. you, know, you, you haven't got any energy for it. But um, it's sort of the energy of that gig is high energy so yeah there's an element of butterflies or something of about what you're about to do yeah but if you just, yeah it's not like yeah but it's there's a balance between nerves and and um, just uh, I guess you don't want to be too nervous otherwise you can't do what you got to do you know yeah right just enough nerves to keep you on the edge but that's about all you want you know? yeah. okay yeah so is there a musical director the answer answer to um, not really because Everyone kind of knows what they're doing, but if there's any musical director at the moment, it's probably Jimmy. Like he, in rehearsals, he he knows what he wants to hear, and he's got his good ears, you know. So if he'll be directing traffic, if anyone. But you know, but we all kind of chip in. So you also play with John Stevens. Yep. All right. Yep. How does that differ from playing with Jimmy Barnes? They're pretty similar in the in the energy department, anyway, and um, the intensity, and I guess a similar style of music too. So. They're kind of similar in a lot of ways, yeah. Okay, yeah. and you do you learn any noise work solos? And oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, see, uh, yeah, there's those iconic things like you mentioned, chisel and even you know Jimmy stuff and noise works. They're a lot of those solos are, and par- are parts. So mm-hmm. you know that you don't you don't need to reinvent them because they're they're on the record for a reason, you know. So, yeah. Okay. So Sorry. especially noise work stuff. Those solos. I know, I know you've interviewed Stuart Fraser. They're sort of they're like um, compositions. So you, you know. You know they're not really improvising as such, so you yeah, just right. play what you play it. With your with your kind of own playing and your own approach to the gig and your pedals and stuff, um, I mean, what do you use for the gig for your for your amps and your and everything? Uh, well, with Jimmy, it's such a loud gig. Uh, like the volume on stage is like you, I've never seen anything else like it. So uh, I've got usually use a Mar- old Marshall head and a high watt head in conjunction. So okay. it's like two hundred watt amps running at the same time. Just to get over the side film, you know. <laughs> it's, um, but with depends on what show you're doing with him. Like so, you know, small shows, it's you use a small Fender combo for this tour we're doing at the moment because it's theatre shows. But uh, with John Stevens, it, I have a super reverb I use with him. Okay. Um, so more combos. Right. You don't need the you know the the massive wattage for the loud you know for the loud Jimmy gig, but okay. Um, but that you need for that gig. Yep. So yeah. Yeah, um, just yeah, but my main amps are a Fender Super Reverb, and I've got a Marshall and a Hi-Watt. So, okay, yeah. all right. Do you have? I mean, if you kind of is this what you were kind of always aiming to do, or are you kind of we always wanting to pursue the original path or being the session guy for hire? Is this what you were wanting to uh, do? I guess when you're young, if someone told you that you'd be able to earn a living playing music, that it's like the dreams come true, yeah. right? So, um, and it's you know it's a real honour getting to play with guys like Jimmy and John and Richard Clapton and. And guys like that. Um, so, so yeah, so you play with Jimmy Barnes, John Stevens, Richard Clapton, anyone yeah. else um, we may know of? I've done some, I've done gigs with a lot of people, but they're my regular guys, you know, and um, uh, yeah, they're the, my three regular okay. artists. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Um, so if anyone's kind of aspiring to do what you're doing, have you got any advice for any younger um, musicians? Apart from practice your ass off, I guess. Yeah, I guess you've got to love it because you've got to do it, you're going to want to do it either way you know mm. um, but it's hard to, to say because everyone has a different path so like there's no it's not like you go to school and learn and then you, then you get promoted and it happens like that it's just everyone's path is so unique it's hard to say but if you if you put yourself out there and you, you're playing you know actually my, a grade 6 teacher told me some great advice which I reckon is true he said if someone asks you if you want to do a gig or you want to play it's better to, probably better to say yes and no it's better to be playing than not playing so that that's like you know, if you always said, if you said no to gigs, you didn't really, you know, didn't think were your thing from when you were a young age, you wouldn't end up doing hardly any gigs. So the more the more you play, yeah, the better off you're going to be, I think, in the long run, because you're going to be learning. Yeah, you know, right. And getting right. better rather than not playing. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I did also want to ask before I forget, you were, you got to play with Sting at the grand final, yeah. which is every musician's dream. Well, mine and a lot of others. Yeah. <laughs> How was that experience? Well, yeah. just to clarify, yeah, uh, we actually mined, so, <laughs> so I'm not going to claim that we played. But that was fa- that was fantastic to get asked to, you know, be on stage or something like that. Um, so you were miming your playing, were you miming your singing? 
Music? Yeah, no, it was all to track, yeah. Oh, the only thing that was live was his vocal. Probably shouldn't say that, maybe. Maybe it's given the, the, uh, the, game, away. the game away, yeah. But, um, so he was cool? He was very cool, yeah. He, he were at the MCG uh, in the morning of the game, and he, they came in from overseas, and him and his guitar player, they, they got there about 8 a.m., and myself and Johnny, the drummer, we were just waiting for him because they wanted to do a run through. And, and how did um, you guys get the call to do? To uh, play? We was I was doing a gig a little, little while before that, uh, and the guy who brought him out was at the gig, and he said, "Do you want to do this?" And I said, "Yeah." And he and so yeah. Um, so what are your plans for future? You write songs. You write your yeah, own stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing my own stuff. I did. I made an EP about a year and a bit ago, and I'm just about to start another one now. Oh, well, probably a full album this time. Um, Singing and playing. Singing and playing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. What's the kind of stuff is that? Uh, it's <laughs> it's I'd say alternative blues. I guess. Yeah. Blues. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, Danny. Thanks for coming in to uh, have a chat. Thanks, buddy. All right. Uh, if you liked that interview, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing more in the future. All right. Thanks a lot. See you soon.